Hey there friends, how's it going? I'm Ben Snow and today I'm going to give you 12 must-have spells in Hogwarts Legacy sequel. Lumos Maxima. Lumos Maxima is a more powerful version of an illuminating charm, Lumos, Lumos, which produces a much stronger beam of light and can also materialize in the form of an orb. While in Hogwarts Legacy we had a great representation of Lumos, both visually and sound-wise, Lumos. Sometimes the spell would get in the way during combat. Perhaps in the sequel, Lumos Maxima could Lumos. actually be used in battles to briefly blind the opponents, similar to how Mandrakes deafen our foes. Aguamenti is a charm that produces a jet of clean, drinkable water. And in Goblet of Fire video game, we had a more powerful version of the spell, Aqua Eracta, which produced a powerful spout of water capable of knocking opponents off their feet. In Hogwarts Legacy 2, this could ultimately be combined in a single spell, but with different upgradable levels, which could become very useful during battles, and if paired with Glacius, could create all kinds of fun combinations. Finfire is a dark magic curse that produces enchanted flames of immense size and heat that can take form of fiery beasts. An enormous amount of concentration and skill is required to perform this spell successfully, and the caster must know the proper incantation to stop the continuous casting of the flames. Otherwise, things can get out of control very quickly. And since we've seen NPCs casting Fire Tornado in the game, it is more than likely the developers will add this dark spell to our arsenal in the sequel. And it could be cool if there is a way of losing control of this spell somehow, and as a result, taking damage from it. Now, more than just having more spells to cast in the game, I'm more looking forward to a bigger variety of options and creativity that you can have with those spells, like using your environment in battle. Pure Totem Locomotor is a charm used to animate inanimate objects. Professor McGonagall used it during the Battle of Hogwarts, and in the Goblet of Fire movie, Voldemort used Pure Totem Locomotor on the gravestone statue to entrap Harry. And luckily, we have shit ton of statues, gargoyles, and suits of armor all around the castle. It is less so in the areas around Hogwarts, but it would be absolutely amazing to bring this demonic looking statue or a stone dragon to life. Of course, there would be some limitations of how many statues you can bring to life or for how far they can travel, but considering the fact that all these suits of armor are already animated and that we even fought similar looking statues here, it's just a matter of making us let that happen. Orb of Water was the spell that Dumbledore used in the Battle of the Department of Mysteries, where he drew the water from the fountain and used it to entrap Voldemort. The key part to this is that there was an available body of water for Dumbledore to use. So in the sequel, in order to cast the spell, would have to be next to a river or a lake. Or if not, then perhaps we could conjure some water with Aguamenti. But it doesn't have to end with just water. The next spell can let us use all of our surroundings strategically. So we already have Ancient Magic Throw in the game, but a Pugno could let us turn large quantities of objects into weapons. In the Hablo Prince, Hermione casts Conjured Canaries to attack Ron. In Deathly Hallows Part 1, Harry casts a Pugno on the insert for the Daily Prophet to attack and slow down Yaxley. And Voldemort used a Pugno to direct all the broken glass shards to swarm and attack Dumbledore. And this is where we can become very creative with our combat in Hogwarts Legacy and turn basically anything into a weapon or weapons, be it a broken glass, collapsed debris from a building, you know, trees, just a bunch of rocks, frozen boulders of water, you name it. By the way, guys, this is the time when the developers are hard at work shaping the sequel and they always need ideas and they often look first at your feedback. So make sure you put your wish lists of the spells in the comments as well as let me know what you think about my theories here. Meteorologinx is an incantation of a weather modifying charm which could become very handy in the sequel and let us change the weather anytime we want, from sunny to rain to thunderstorms and vice versa. And it won't necessarily be to our advantage, similar to how Thunderbrew was during battles, but more of a convenience to us, just like the ability to change from day to night or simply to sit in chairs. It's not a spell, but we need it but I personally would have a thunderstorm happening throughout the entire game. Just non-stop, Blade Runner gloomy weather. 
Protego Maxima is a stronger version of the shield charm that, when cast, forms a massive protective barrier. On its own, this spell wouldn't do much service in quick battles, considering the fact that it takes some time to put it up, but the spell could bring another type of enemy encounters. In addition to the regular enemy camps and wandering dark wizards that we can attack, perhaps there can be instances where we are going to be attacked by a swarm of enemies. Every time there will be a little giveaway sound that indicates an imminent attack, we will see the enemies approaching from afar, which will give us the window of opportunity to prepare for the attack and cast Protego Maxima to slow down the enemies. We then also will have the opportunity to prepare the area and come up with a plan of how to deal with the invaders, either quickly throw some venomous tentaculas or <laughs> cabbages, or pour a huge puddle of water so it's ready to engulf the enemies when they come, or I don't know, maybe you don't do any of the defensive spells. You just start shooting them off <laughs> with Confringo from afar. More than the spell itself, I think this type of raids could be a ton of fun in the next game. Something similar to Shadow of War, where you could attack or defend fortresses, but on a smaller scale. Protego Diabolica is a powerful dark charm that allows the caster to create a protective ring of black fire around them that incinerates enemies who come into contact with the flames, but leaves friends and allies unharmed. And in the sequel, perhaps this spell could be used as an alternative, darker version of Protego Maxima, which instead of fending off the spells, will destroy the actual targets. Let me know which one would you actually prefer. I think I would always go for Protego Diabolica. That sounds more fun and looks cooler. Because let's be honest, visuals of the spells are so important in the game. I'm a bit shocked that this particular spell wasn't in the original game, and some may argue that this Acromantial Offendant spell is non-canon since it was only used in the films. I would argue that it actually is, since Flipendo was only used in video games to flip objects, yet it made its way into the Portkey game's supported Hogwarts Legacy. So, I personally don't see any problem with using this blue blast of light to send a spider flying a few yards back. The Patronus Charm is probably the most desired spell among the fans. Considering that there are naturally two levels of Patronus, the incorporeal and corporeal, this could work perfectly in the game. In fact, we already have the Patronus Charm in Hogwarts Legacy, though only cast by an NPC during a quest that only Hufflepuffs partake in. The thing is, you only use Patronus to fend off either Dementors or Lethifolds, which means you need to have both of those things out in the wild for us to use this spell on. And if you haven't heard, Lethifolds are these terrifying looking magical creatures, which are basically living cloths, something straight out of a Souls game. They are normally found in tropics, but I'm sure there can be undiscovered continental species. Uh, in the late 1800s, but the Dementors don't normally just hang out in the wild. They serve the Ministry, well, unless someone is able to manipulate them. But I think there is a way of bringing both the Dementors and Patronus Charm in the sequel as its own separate mechanic. I think the Dementors should work just like those brutes in the recent Assassin's Creed games. If you use too many dark spells or in general kill a lot of wizards, someone will send Dementors on you. Every time they start approaching you, you will have the same warning signs, everything will start getting covered in ice, your screen will get desaturated, etc. And you will have three options. One, avoid their contact at all costs and just run away. Two, fight them if you have unlocked Expecto Patronum. Or three, instead of paying off the bounty like in Assassin's Creed, use Obliviate to wipe off the memory of whoever sent off the Dementors on you. This will probably mean that the Patronus will be only available closer to the end of the game or as part of some side quests where, you know, like it will be an option to either learn it or not. Of course, the question is if we are going to have a choice of animal for our Patronus, which in a way makes you think that it's probably too much to handle for this game. But the thing is, the developers are now moving to Unreal Engine 5, which is going to allow them more freedom and give more power to the mechanics and effects that they're going to create. I talk about it in this video. But guys, make sure you post your most wanted spell list in the comments. And if you want to talk more on and off topic, join my Discord or follow me on Instagram. I'll see you next time.